a stroke of bad luck, and a marriage on the edge of insanity. When you put these two things together, you get the stories we have in store for you in tonight's episode of Fact or Fiction. The line that divides the factual from the unreal has long since blurred. The tales we once thought fantastical now implanted as truth. To decipher verity from the imagined, you must break from the ordinary and consider a universe where the outlandish prevails. Can you expand your mind to see beyond our perceived reality? Can you decide what's fact or fiction? What do you think the chances are of being hit by a meteorite? However low the probability may be, those numbers mean nothing to Hillary Atkinson, a woman whose life was changed after an unusual encounter with a space rock. As Hillary describes it, the day was like any other. The 62-year-old woman will never forget what it was like to have Mother Nature tried to assassinate her. The quiet afternoon was a sleepy one, so Hillary did what she loved most on those quiet days. She napped. Her dreams were as they always were, the silence of the home allowing her to enjoy running off with whichever celebrity man of the hour her brain latched onto. The universe, however, had a different plan for her that day. Just as George Clooney took her hand in holy matrimony, a softball-sized chunk of rock crashed through her ceiling. That's not what woke her, however. The object ricocheted off her bedside radio and slammed into her thigh. She was jolted awake to find a large bruise where there wasn't one previously. It took several days for the mess to get cleared up, but once it did, and after Hillary's injury was tended to, she was able to go back to her normal life. Or so she had expected. The bruise lingered, but otherwise the meteorite caused no physical damage. What she did experience was on a completely different plane, and no matter how much she insisted to her friends and family, nobody believed her. The meteorite that had struck her, that otherwise harmless piece of rock that had been identified by a local geologist, had cursed her. Hillary didn't believe it at first, but the bad luck seemed to compile upon itself. Three days after the incident, when she was ready to go back to work, her car didn't start, the product of a faulty starter. Despite the week she had been having, her boss was none too pleased with her tardy that day. Things got worse when the electricity in her house died the following night, and her phone, which she swears was at 100% charge when she fell asleep, went dead. With no alarm to wake her, she was again late for work. This time, she was written up a first in her long career at a doctor's office. Everything she touched seemed to go wrong, even her brother's surprise birthday party the following week. She was responsible for the cake, but in the newfound chaos of her life, Hillary forgot the dessert, which somehow ended in a large family fight, ruining the party. Nobody was speaking to her, and she didn't blame them. She felt cursed, as if the meteorite was more than it seemed. This string of bad luck lasted for two weeks, nearly costing Hillary her job and her friends. Then, as suddenly as it started, the black cloud that followed her went away. She can vividly remember that first day where she woke up and nothing terrible waited for her. No dead car, no angry boss, no corrupt computer. Whatever that meteorite had done to her had lifted, allowing her to return again to her quiet life. Well, that sounded like quite the conundrum. An unlucky rock crashing into your roof, leaving you with a string of odd and unfortunate occurrences. Was Hillary struck by a cursed meteorite? Or are we back to weaving our tales? Let us know what you think in the comments section below and be sure to vote by using the on-screen poll as we get ready for our second story. It was the vacation of a lifetime. But Jeffrey Temple had no idea just how much his life would change after it. After snagging a souvenir that was 
better left on the Hawaiian Islands, the Ohio native was left wondering if he was insane or being tortured for his decisions. It was the vacation of a lifetime, a seven-day trip to Hawaii, all expenses paid by the mom and dad travel agency. Jeffrey never expected his parents to send him to Hawaii, but then again, he never expected to graduate from Columbia. He celebrated his graduation with friends he knew he'd never see again, and then set off on a solo excursion to the Hawaiian Islands. As his week came to a close, Jeffrey realized he had forgotten to get his parents a souvenir as promised. Well, forgotten was being polite. He just didn't care about it until the last minute. With his spending cash running low, he decided to go for something natural. So, during a hike through the Hawaiian Volcanoes National Park, he went for a piece of lava rock. His father was fascinated by nature, and his mother loved unique oddities. It was the perfect gift. For his flight home, he tucked the small rock into a pair of jeans, knowing that some local whack job would scold him for taking a piece of the island. It was of some sort, but Jeffrey didn't go for myths. Before he could pass the lava rock off to his parents, though, he got a taste of the local superstition. When Jeffrey arrived at his apartment from the airport, he was met with smashed windows and an empty living room. Based on security footage from a nearby convenience store, the robbery occurred at the same time as Jeffrey's flight. Too mad to link it to the rock, he chalked it up to a bad neighborhood. The following morning, with the rock on his person, Jeffrey thought to pay his parents a visit and hand off the token of the Pacific. His apartment was across the street from the train station, but the road that separated him from the entrance was a fun game of Frogger. It wasn't incredibly busy, but busy enough to where crossing without a crosswalk was a risk. That day, Jeffrey thought to risk it rather than walk the two minutes to the nearest crosswalk. He had gotten good at dodging traffic, but there was an obstacle in the road that day that he hadn't counted on. Actually, not even that he didn't count on it, he just never saw it. It was there though, and as he told time and time again from his permanent wheelchair, the unseen object somehow kept him from making it safely to the other side. Less than halfway across the street, as a sizable SUV barreled down, a little too unaware of the man in the street, Jeffrey felt his shoe snag onto something. He pulled at it, but it refused to budge. There were no witnesses of the SUV hitting him head on, but it's believed he misjudged the distance of the car and went for it. Jeffrey insists otherwise, and after a week in the hospital, when he returned home, he boxed the lava rock and shipped it back to the island, to the national park he had stolen it from. Hawaiian lore says that taking a volcanic rock from the islands can bring bad luck, but can legends dictate reality? While you're mulling it over, we have our third and final story of the night. This one showing that some marriages truly are till death. Sally was already tired of Dean's everything, but she put up with him, mostly out of convenience. He was loud, judgmental, unforgiving, and crass. All things Sally wished she didn't have to live with, but somehow did because it was better than being alone. At least, that's what she told herself. To make the marriage bearable, Sally insisted they adopt a kitten a furry ball of love that would give her the affection Dean refused to. Dean gave in, likely, Sally believes, to keep her from begging and constantly bringing it back up. She loved that kitten so much more than she had ever loved Dean. When she first picked it up in the adoption center and it mewed softly rather than run away, Sally knew she had to take the precious feline home. Dean hated the cat. But Sally didn't realize just how much until a typically quiet Sunday in their household. The cat was feeling cabin fever and needed to expel her energy. She made the mistake of darting across Dean's path, causing him to topple over the plate carrying his lunch. Before Dean could even process that he had lost his lunchtime feast, his foot instinctively kicked forward, connecting with the cat's rear. The beast yelped pathetically under Dean's forceful kick. 
When she tried to run away, he kicked again, catching her in the side. When Dean went for a third strike, she was able to get away, causing him to lose his balance. But this only angered him even more. He lumbered towards the small kitten while Sally was out grocery shopping. After a brief game of cat and mouse, he snagged her by the tail and just let her dangle in front of him, her paws frantically trying to scratch and break herself free. Just as Dean connected a slap against the cat's small face, Sally walked in and was in immediate disbelief. She knew Dean was cruel, but this seemed to go even beyond that. To say they exchanged words would be an understatement. In fact, it wouldn't be entirely accurate, as Sally exchanged something extra with Dean. A bullet. She could handle being his verbal punching bag, but to know he was capable of hurting her precious pet pushed her over the edge. When he first purchased the gun as a means of defense, she told him he was going to regret spending money on it. Several years later, she finally proved her point with one bullet right to his chest. Dean didn't survive, and Sally was charged for his murder. As for the cat, it can only be assumed she was returned to the shelter Sally adopted her from. We all know that abusive spouses exist. So is it really that far-fetched that someone would kill, even if the catalyst was a kitten? Was this extreme reaction completely justifiable? Or maybe it doesn't even matter at all, and this is just another product of our imaginations. Well, we've reached that portion of tonight's episode, The Reveal. Are you ready to find out if you can decipher between facts or fiction. Let's look back at tonight's three stories and find out which were born from reality and which were fabrications of the imagination. Let's start with our first story, that of Hillary Atkinson and the unlucky meteorite. Do you think that this story was fact? If so, you'd be partially right. We lived at the base of this tale from the unfortunate incident of Anne Hodges, who was the first documented person to be struck by a meteorite as she napped one afternoon. Although Anne survived the incident with a pretty big bruise, she never suffered any string of unfortunate events. Our second tale is a similar story, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's just as fake. So, did Jeffrey feel the wrath of Pele, the Hawaiian goddess of volcanoes? Though locals believe the superstition to be real, this story is not. Finally, do you believe a woman would kill her husband over his abuse of her beloved cat? If it doesn't sound too unbelievable, that's because this one was real. The woman in question Mary Harrison shot her husband Dexter after she found him to be abusing their cat in June of 2018. She took their gun and emptied a round into him, just like in our story. He later died at the hospital and she's currently being held on a $100,000 bond while awaiting trial. How well did you do in tonight's video? Did you look past the deception of our world and define the off-blurred line that struggles to separate lies from the truth? Let us know in the comment section below. And should you find the urge to test your perceptions again, be sure to subscribe and join us next time when we ask you to decide what's fact or fiction.